Hello. The problem with these big digital SLR cameras, I think, is that you can't see inside them. It's a sort of closed black box of magic tricks, isn't it? Um, and it's very, very difficult to physically understand how it works. Um, I think if you can understand how um, it physically works inside, what mechanically is sort of going on inside of the camera, then it's much, much easier to unpick all of the dials and the knobs and the terminology and all of this sort of thing to gain a real understanding of how the camera works and also to take better pictures. The key to this is not to start with this camera for a start. In terms of explaining it, I'm going to go right the way back, almost to sort of the beginnings of photography, um, and look at a very different sort of camera with you. Um, I've got one here which I've actually made out of a bin. It's actually a pinhole camera um, because it's got a tiny little pinhole in the front and you can make pinhole cameras out of basically anything that's light proof. This happens to be a light proof container that's a, that's a bin. You could make it out of a light proof um, biscuit tin, shoe box. I've seen them made out of fridges. It, it, it's, it's amazing. You can almost make a pinhole camera out of anything that's um, able to have a hole in it and become a lightproof container. I took this photograph of my house using this bin. It's a very simple process, which if you can understand and relate it to your DSLR, you really are sort of 80 or 90 percent of the way to, to having a complete control of your photography and knowing what's going on. So, to take a photograph with the bin camera then, um, the first thing to notice then that this is light proof, it's completely light proof. I've put some tape around the top to make it light proof so that no light can leak in. In a dark room inside, you need a little bit of preparation. Um, you need to put in the photographic paper. A blank piece of photographic paper goes inside the bin it's blue tacked in opposite the hole here so that when the light comes in through the hole to take the photograph it hits the paper. Still in the dark the lid goes on so that it's light proof inside and most importantly your finger goes over the end here so that when you take it outside to take the photograph no light gets into the bin until you're absolutely ready. So out you go into the sunshine probably where it's nice and bright to take your photograph put the, the bin down, point it at whatever you want to take your photograph off, and to start taking the photograph, take your finger off the hole. Now this bin, or this pinhole camera, is quite large, and it actually took three minutes to take the photograph that I showed you down there. And during those three minutes, the light comes in through the hole, floods the inside of the bin with light, it hits the paper on the back here, the paper is incredibly light sensitive and there's a sort of chemical reaction between the light that's coming in through the bit through the bin and the pinhole here and the paper at the back here. The light almost sort of burn, burns the paper and imprints an image on the photographic or photo sensitive light sensitive paper here. After the three minutes or so is up to stop taking the photograph finger goes back over the bin hole here the pinhole rather here and then you need to take the pinhole camera back into the dark room. The paper comes out, it goes through a couple of chemical processes, it's washed and it's dried, and you end up with a picture that looks something like this. Now, this really is the key to understanding how the big digital SLR works. If you can understand how this pinhole camera works, then you really do get a total understanding of how your DSLR works. In the next video, I'm going to stick with the pinhole camera for another few minutes and just show you um, in sort of practical terms with pictures a little bit more how it works so you can understand how the light goes in in case it was difficult to understand with the bin. We'll then go on and have a look at how that actually relates to a real camera and how it relates to all the knobs and the dials and the apertures and the f-stops and all the sorts of words that you've probably come across in your uh, in your digital SLR man digital DSLR manual that are uh, confusing and slightly stressful to look at and read.